Hi, I'm Simon and welcome to another pickups video. Today I'm going to be talking a bit about some of the games that I've bought in the Steam sale, then some of the physical games that I've bought here in the UK, and then I'm going to end by talking about a few games that I've managed to find in my storage unit, things that I'd either forgotten about or just haven't played for a long time. So, the Steam sale this year, um, is it great? Well, I don't know about you, but I don't think it is. The Steam sales of these days, these last kind of year and a half or whatever it is, have not been as good as the old days where they used to have flash sales and kind of rotating uh, every day different items that are on sale. It was kind of exciting. Well, I don't know whether exciting is quite the right word, but it was fun checking out Steam every day or every six hours to try and catch the new flash sale and find out, oh, is something I really want on sale at a great price? I liked that, but obviously them doing better just selling things at a fixed sale price for the whole sale period which this time is uh, until the 5th of July so you've still got if you're watching it on the day I upload this video you've still got plenty of time to pick up any of the things I mentioned today and even though as I said I don't find the sale as interesting as it once was there's still plenty of things for me to buy but the first thing I'm going to talk about is something that I didn't buy. Something that's not even in the sale, but it is the thing that is top of the Steam sale list. Um, not sale, but sales list. And that is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. And this is um, a battle royale kind of game where you're pitted against, I think, up to 99 other players uh, on an island and you fight to the death to become the one sole surviving um, the victor of this battle. And I've just watched, I mean, I've seen a few clips and things of it before, but I just watched a video by Lazy Game Reviews, LGR, and he just put up a video of one of the matches that he played recently and, and managed to actually come out as the victor, even though he said it was only his fourth or fifth time playing the game. And in the other games that he played, he was <laughs> very unsuccessful in a couple, of, uh, a couple of battles. But it's one of those games that looks... And I don't know if you guys are the same, that if something looks so good that you think you're going to sink hundreds of hours into it, you're kind of reluctant to buy it. I mean, I I don't know whether I entirely trust myself with this game because it's the sort of thing that I could get I could get quite lost in because it looks like the kind of scenarios that it creates because of the tension of your life actually having a sort of consequence to your action like in a, for example the opposite of it would be something like call of duty where i when i play just run that round like a headless chicken getting killed left right and center i kind of normally you know, like a good game for me is if i come out with a kill to death ratio that's equal um whereas this game you've really got to be quite strategic and you really got to think about your next action. You know, do I go into this house to try and loot it? Or do I try and run across this field? Because you just don't know who's out there. And listening to LGR talk about it, it was, um, yeah, the way he described some of the heart pounding moments made me think that's the sort of stuff I really enjoy about those kind of video games, the sort of, you know, first person combat games. Um, uh, well, the chances are when, you know, maybe you're watching this a couple of weeks down the line from when I update it, I could already have bought it um, because I've got about a week off work when I get back to the UAE and 
you know, idle hands, as they say, they are uh, the devil's plaything. Or idle hands do the devil's work. Well, whatever it is, idle hands play lots of video games and um, <laughs> that's one that I might want to play. But I haven't even bought it. Anyway, enough about Battlegrounds. Um, actually, let's talk about some of the things that I have bought. And the first thing I put into my Steam cart was something I spoke about in the last video, something that I watched Mark Verheer playing only this morning, and that is Nex Machina. Ah, oh, that looks like a fantastic twin stick shooter. I'm not going to go on about it because you guys, if you've watched any of my videos before, you, you're well aware I like twin stick shooters. I love Rezo Gun and uh, you know, the company that make it, Housemark, make fantastic shooters. And Next Machina looks so good. Talking of games that I'm going to sink a lot of time into it, that will probably one of, be one of them. Although that has more of a sort of pick up and play kind of feel to it. You know, I could play it for half an hour and then come back the next day and play it a bit more. And a bit like I was saying with um, Alienation, um, that 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 was like that. I could play one level of it and then come back the next day and play another level, another level, another level and just keep going like that. And I think next Machina will be small bursts, but very regularly that I'll be playing it. Uh, another game that I decided to pick up that um, was based on things that I'd seen on YouTube because I'd never heard of this before seeing um, the Gamer Virgins do a little playthrough, well not a playthrough of it, a, a let's play of part of the game. And then I think the very next day, Critique Quest, um, I think her name's Meg, um, she put up a, a video about it as well, a little review. And it looks like an awesome game. And that awesome game is Little Nightmares. And it's a side-scrolling... Uh, I wouldn't say platformy type game. It's like like Limbo or like Inside, which I mentioned a little while ago that I absolutely loved. Um, this little nightmares, it looks like stop motion animation. Um, the graphics themselves, the kind of the charm of the game sold it to me. So I think I think it was about ten pounds, what whatever it was. Um so I had to have that. So that's that's uh, been purchased. What else? Um, Hover Junkers, which is um, a PvP shooting, a VR shooting game, kind of like Space Cowboys. But, you know, you actually have to play against another real player. Unfortunately, it, from what I understand, it doesn't have AI or bots at the moment. Um, there isn't a single player mission or single player campaign, but apparently that's coming. But I was just kind of intrigued by it and also the people that made it. Um, there's a guy called Brendan something. I'll put his name up here. Um, who was involved with when Freddie Wong was kind of starting out making videos before the sort of rocket jump days uh, and uh, this Brendan guy was with him and did a lot of the sort of special effects well I think from that he moved into video game development and Hover Junkers is one or maybe the only game that his his VR company has made so um, sometimes I feel and I don't know if you're the same that buying some of these early access or indie titles it's as much about supporting the people that are making it because you like their ideas and their project than it is buying a game so i've heard that the community has kind of died off for this game and it's really difficult to find anyone to play against but i was still willing to part with the cash to support the project to help them develop the single player part of it and hopefully more people will come back to it and there'll be people to play against but yeah, I think it was only about six pounds so I'm not gonna um, feel too bad if I don't really get to play anything apart from the shooting range which you can play single player 
Um, another project game that is at the moment unfinished, but um, I was intrigued by, and because I loved the original, I wanted to get this, um, and it's Black Mesa. And Black Mesa, as you can probably guess from the title, is connected to Half-Life. It's a not not so much a mod, a re-engineering of the original Half-Life. I think I'm not sure which engine they've built it in. Maybe one of the Unreal engines, but you know, basically tarting it up and making it look nice for modern computers. And I haven't played Half-Life One in a while and I want to play through it again so this will give me the excuse and at only five pounds not too bad. Um, another game that I've had for a long time I've got it on the PS3 but because I don't have a PS3 with me in um, in the UAE and the PS4 is not backwards compatible I really wish it was but it isn't. Um, I haven't been able to play this game, but it was only two pounds on the PC, and that is Dishonored. And, you know, I, some people love it, some people hate it. Look, I don't know too much about it, so don't spoil it and tell me about the story. I don't really want to know, but I know it's kind of a first person stealth game, I think two pounds I'm gonna find out it, it it looks pretty good so I got that and I also picked up um, another couple of VR games one called Hordes or Horde Z no Hordes sounds better uh, a zombie wave shooter that looked looks quite good and I thought about buying it a while ago but their wave shooters are two a penny in VR and some of them are fantastic and others are just kind of, eh. I suppose it's like the, with, with any kind of technology, um, VR has been saturated with lots of the same sorts of games and there are people who set the bar pretty high and there are other ones that just kind of they're following me too kind of games and you know, what's the point? What's the point in spending five pounds on something that's uh, when you can spend ten pounds on something that's really quite good? And that's what I thought about hordes. I was thinking, oh, I wasn't quite sure at the price it was selling for, but now I think it's at about five pounds. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. It, um, if it gives me a couple of hours of fun, five pounds for two hours of fun, I think that's a pretty fair trade off as far as I'm concerned. Um, and the only other thing I got was a, a game called Dexed, D-E-X-E-D. -E -E um, and I'm not really sure what it is about. I just know that I had it on my Steam wish list. So I must have investigated it at some point in the past and it was in the sale 50% off. So I, I bought that as well. And if it turns out to be wonderful, I'll be letting you know about it in an upcoming video. But those are the only things that I bought in the sale. There was one other game that I bought before the sale that I don't think I mentioned in a previous video because I haven't played it yet, um, is Ori and the Blind Forest, the definitive edition. And that looks, from what little bits I've seen of it, it looks really beautiful. And what I saw of the sequel at E3, the Microsoft press conference I think it was on um, really piqued my interest so I want to play the original Ori before I play the sequel um, so yeah I'm quite looking forward to giving that one a go so those are the things that I bought and uh, apart from player unknowns battlegrounds which I may well buy soon but there are actually a couple of things uh, that I forgot to buy and um, that piqued my interest but I don't know how I forgot to include them in my cart. One of those was um, a pixel art game called Domina and as you can probably guess by the title you are the Domina of a, a Ludus, a house, a gladiator house and you have to 
train your gladiators up to fight in the arena to win you honor and coin um, as they would say in Spartacus um, and I think from watching the TV show Spartacus the, that whole world seemed quite interesting and I think for three pounds fifty a little pixel art simulation game of that that life seems pretty interesting so um, I will be going back onto Steam in the next couple of days to buy that and also another one I missed that I've been meaning to buy for a while but I've been waiting for it to come down in price because I'm not sure that I will like it and that is Stick of Truth the South Park game that's uh, heavily inspired by Lord of the Rings so yes a South Park RPG I don't know um, I've heard some good things about it but um, now I think it's down to about six pounds now and I don't feel too bad that if I play it for a little bit and I don't enjoy it you know it's not it's not a big deal of money to lose so I I will be picking that up soon so those are the things that I've bought or should have bought but there are also some other games that I think are good value for money that I could recommend things that I've played that now are either ridiculously cheap or they've been ridiculously cheap every time there's a sale um, but I think they're worth mentioning um, one of those is one of the games on Steam I've sunk the most hours into and I think when I bought it um, including all the DLC I paid probably about £20 for it but now you can get the complete pack for £7.50 and that is Civilization V ah, and it is a great strategy game if you want something that's a bit kind of relaxed and you can sit there and play it at the same time as doing something else you know watching a TV program or listening to some music it's it's a really nice sort of chilled out long turn I, I like to play the sort of epic version of it which stretches it out for I think 500 turns or something like that and yeah it's it's a wonderful strategy game and from what I understand I haven't played Civilization 6 but I've heard a lot of bad things about it um, it just there's just not a lot of content there. I've heard people say it's really not that much different to Civilization V and at the price, which is even in the sale, it's probably about £35. If you're considering getting one of those sorts of games, Civilization V, definitely all the way. Such good value for money. A couple of other things that seem to be great value. Shadow of Mordor is now selling for £3 or just over £3 great for that sort of money it's fantastic I know I said in a previous video I didn't enjoy the ending and the second half of the game felt a bit of a retread of the first half of the game for three pounds what does it matter just play through the first half of the game when you get off of that first map area and you can see oh god I've got to do another map and just basically do the same thing again forget about it you know you've got your three pounds worth who cares um Another great, I mean, this is ridiculous value for money, but Portal and Portal 2 for £1.64. If you haven't played either of these games, do yourself a favour and oh, play them. I mean, the first one's great, but the second one is a masterpiece. So, so good and so funny. I mean, it's, you know, as you get further in the game, there are puzzles that are actually a bit mentally taxing. I'm not talking in the same way that Talus Principle has got me stuck at the moment. I have still haven't been able to get any further in that. But the Portal games, you know, the, the little logic-based puzzles, space-based puzzles um, are, are fantastic. And the additional humour in the second one, I mean, it's funny in the first one, but in the second one, it's it's hilarious. So ridiculously good value for money also um, another valve title or titles uh, the left for dead series one and two two pounds 24 for the two of them really great fun zombie co-op shooters 
um, I don't think you can really go wrong at that price. You know, even if you played it for an hour, it's two pounds twenty-four. Another wonderful game with a fantastic soundtrack, beautiful art is uh, Transistor, and I've talked about this before. I played through it on the on the PS4, um, but I think it's one. In fact, I think why not? Why not just add it to my Steam collection as well at that price? Because it's it's just like a charitable donation, then, isn't it? I don't need it, but I can give two pounds twenty four to the developers. And I think I noticed the uh, the soundtrack is an extra pound, and that's easily worth it. Fantastic. Um, a couple of things that are a little bit more expensive, but I think still were uh, definitely worth it. The new Doom reboot is only ten pounds. I think I paid twenty or maybe twenty five for it, and felt that. Is really good value for money at that price, but at ten pounds, an absolute steal. If you like first-person shooters and you enjoyed the pace of the original Doom, the new Doom is great. A slightly older game, but I think quite good fun, or at least part of it for me. I'm considering, but it's ten pounds. I've got it on the PlayStation Three, but then I don't really get to play my PlayStation Three anymore. And the game in question is Call of Duty World at War. And the part of it I really like, the zombie maps. <laughs> this, I don't know what it is about. I, that single, or that, I think there's, there, I think there is more than one zombie level, but just playing that first zombie level is so good. And it's got, even though, I don't know what it is about it. Even though it's the same thing, it seems to have really good replayability. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. I mean, there are a couple of other things, but they're games that I haven't played, so I'm not sure. But they're things that piqued my interest. Um, Dying Light, the following um, enhanced edition, which I think, I could be wrong, but is made by the people who made Dead Island and Dead Island Riptide and um, I liked those games but they seemed uh, they were a bit flawed and a bit repetitive and Dying Light is an evolution of that gameplay style and it includes sort of parkour movement in there as well so it sounds a bit like a mashup of Dead Island and um, What's it called? Not Catalyst. Mirror's Edge. Well, because Catalyst is the sequel. Mirror's Edge. Kind of a mashup of those two things. But that's £15 at the moment. And I'm tempted, but I've got so many other things to play. It'll just end up sitting on the back burner for ages. And I might as well wait another year. And then it'll probably be six or seven pounds and buy it then. Um, and one other thing that caught my eye, only £4.50 now. Uh, is Sniper Elite 3 and I wish I'd bought this on the PS4 a while back but I, I opted to get the zombie Nazi trilogy because I thought it would be more fun but ugh, I didn't really enjoy it I played it a little bit but you know that was sort of 15 pounds thrown down the toilet but Sniper Elite 3 looks a more interesting game um, and at £4.50 that might be one when I pop back in a couple of days, I might get that one as well. So I've waffled on for nearly half an hour about Steam. There's still more stuff over here to talk about. So let's start by looking at a couple of games that I actually picked up in the wild, as Lawn Boy likes to say. A couple of Wii games and an Xbox, original Xbox game. And you might be thinking, oh, why, why bother with these old games? Well, I've just recently got my Wii U and it's nicely backwards compatible with the Wii games. And the Xbox One is going to have backwards compatibility with original Xbox titles in the next, well, next six months before the end of the year, they said. So I thought, oh. Let's have a look around for some original Xbox titles. And one of them that I found was 
Arcade Treasures 3, um, which I then found out I actually owned anyway. So whichever one, <laughs> whichever one is in better condition is the one I'll take back to the UAE with me, probably along with number one and two as well. I do like these compilation packs. They're rather, rather good. Um, then the Wii U game, no, not Wii U, the original Wii games that I picked up, um, I got in a charity shop. I was quite surprised to find them there. And they were only 99p each. And one of those is Wii Play, which um, is, might be surprising that I don't have it. I think it's one of the games that came with a second um, Wii Mote. Um, but yeah, I, I never had this one. So I played it around at a friend's house many many years ago. So yeah, I, I like that one. And another game that I know is good, um, and I've played a little bit of it, and that is Resident Evil 4, the Wii edition. Um, not a massive fan of the original, um, especially like the first Resident Evil, even when it came out, I thought it was absolute rubbish. But I think Resident Evil 4, from what I've played of it, seems pretty good and Resident Evil 2 is quite cool. Um, so yeah, I'll be taking those back with me to play. Um, then I picked up a couple of things. So the other things that I got were ones that I bought online, even though I got them from CEX or as it is webuy.com is their, um, their URL. Um, but I wasn't sure I'd be able to get them locally. And so I just thought, well, there's no difference. Price is going to be the same and delivery was free. So I got a game that I've got on the PS4. Um, but I really wanted to play it on its original system. And that is Zombie U. Uh, I really quite liked this. I was surprised by how much I liked it. I played through probably the first hour or so. And, and it took me back to seeing those original videos. I think they were E3 videos when they revealed the Wii U and showing this game and how it uses the uh, the gamepad for the inventory. And I thought, yeah, yeah, I really like that. And so I think I'm going to have some fun playing through that. And then, well, I picked up quite a few things that are not actually for me. I picked them up for my wife because she likes motion games so she she likes the Wii and she likes Kinect as well and one of the things I got was Wii Fit U which is an updated version of Wii Fit that takes advantage of the superior graphics of the Wii U and also includes a pedometer to track your number of steps and well, I guess from that calculate how many calories you've burned. So we'll see how that works out. I think that was about six or eight pounds. Um, I think my wife will be quite happy with that. Um, some other things I picked up for her along with, I don't even know where it's gone, but I bought the adapter. So I can use the, I've had it for a while, the Connect 2 sensor for the the xbox one but you can't plug it in you need an adapter so i picked one of those up and i think i think it was about 20 pounds so all in with the connect sensor that i bought i think last year and <laughs> and this uh, adapter it's cost me about 40 pounds to have a connect for for my Xbox One, and I'm sure some of you are screaming, oh my God, that's £40 you've just thrown away. I, I know there's a lot of hatred towards the Kinect, but I actually like it. I, you know, the few, the few games that I've played on it, I know there are not many, I've quite enjoyed them. So, and, and as I said, my wife likes these motion games, so I've picked them up for her. But a couple of them, um, well, Let's look at one of this, one of the most obvious ones to get, Just Dance. Yeah, Connect works quite well for dance games, and I'm not um, in private. I'm not shy to make a fool of myself. I think you know things like this. 
because I can't dance and sing star because I can't sing kind of my wife finds endearing because she can sing and she can dance and so we can play these games together and she gets a good laugh out of it by watching me either try to dance or try to sing. So I haven't ever played any of the Just Dance games. I, I did have uh, Dance Central 1 and Dance Central 3 on the original Connect, and they're, they're pretty cool. Um, I don't know where the Just Dance is, but it has some quite good songs on it, so I'll find out and let you know. Don't think I'll be making a video about it, though. And another one, my wife's a big Disney fan, and this intrigued me. Fantasia Music Evolved, like a music rhythm game using not only the music from Disney, but um, lots of other famous artists, including David Bowie and Imagine Dragons, Radioactive. I really like that tune. Um, Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody, White Stripes, Seven Nation Army. Oh, so, yeah, some quite interesting tunes on there. So we'll see how that goes. It's created by Harmonic, so they kind of know what they're doing with rhythm games. Then the last two Xbox One titles I picked up were also things that my wife really likes, but also I do. You know, we like to have people over to our house and play quizzes. We like to go out to pub quizzes. And so quiz games are something that are quite good fun to have your mates over and play. So one of them I got was uh, Monopoly. So it's a kind of Monopoly family fun pack, which has Monopoly Plus, My Monopoly, and Monopoly Deal. So I have no idea, aside from Monopoly, what any of those things are. So we'll find out. And I've played one of these before, I think on the Xbox 360, the Jackbox Party Pack. I played one of these You Don't Know Jack games, and it was a pretty funny quiz game. So this has got the 2015 You Don't Know Jack game in there and also a couple of other things. Hmm. And you can use your phone or your tablet to join in and play the game. So we'll see how that goes. So I think that's it for things. Oh, no. Also, I don't know if you're interested. I know if Pete Snaztastic um, is watching. He loves his movies. Uh, I picked up some ultra HD 4K Blu-ray things. I kind of, I really quite like these. Um, you might think they're a bit gimmicky, but I quite like watching movies in their best possible quality. I mean, I know Netflix and um, I recently got Amazon, Amazon Prime. Um, the quality is pretty good, but it's the, it's not quite up there with ultra um, HD Blu-rays. And so I kind of got, well, let's have a look at this one because this one's quite reasonable value for money because these things are still fairly expensive. They're sort of 20 to 25 pounds if you pay full price for them. Whereas I got a box of six called the, um, the Premier Collection. I think they might be overstating it a little bit. I mean, you've got some great movies on here. You've got The Revenant and you've got Life of Pi and Kingsman is, I really enjoy it. I wouldn't go so far as to say it, it's a classic movie, but um, those three are definitely good. Independence Day, the original one, um, complete nonsense, but quite good fun. Uh, and then a couple of movies I haven't seen, so... Um, yeah, I, I don't know if they're good, but uh, The Maze Runner, which looks a sort of teen Hunger Games type movie, and uh, something called Exodus, Gods and Kings, which stars Christian Bale by the looks of it. A story of one man's daring courage to take on the might of an empire. Yeah, I don't know about that, but six movies for £60, not too bad. And then I picked up two for 30. Um, and I, I like, I like sci-fi. I like Tom Cruise movies and Oblivion is one that I've wanted to get for a little while. I've seen it already. I really liked it. 
and um, I'm quite happy to get that one for £15. And then some over-the-top monster mashing fun with Pacific Rim. And that's, uh, that's quite cool. I really did enjoy that. And uh, I look forward to seeing them in all of their HDR and 4K glory on my telly when I get home. Um, there are a couple of other movies that I would like to get on 4K, but um, they're not out yet. So I'm going to have to wait. Things like uh, Logan, uh, which I've seen already, I really liked, but it's out in the States, but isn't out in the UK until the 10th of July and I'll be back home by then. So I suppose I could get it shipped over, but then things just start getting a bit more expensive when you do that. Okay, so there we go, movies. The last little thing we just have a very quick look at are things that I have got out of my storage unit, things that I bought a while ago and some of them I'd forgotten about. So for example, what have we got here? Pikmin on the Wii. So I'll definitely be taking that back. I've got um, Pikmin 3, that was recommended I think by Jamie R, who, who said you gotta try that game. Good recommendation, it is very cool. And I did like the original Pikmin, so looking forward to playing a bit more of that again. I'm definitely a fan of this series, especially the first one. And I've never played it on the Wii, but it's Dead Rising, Chop Till You Drop. Um, not really sure how it's different to the one on the Xbox 360, but I guess it's gonna have some Wiimote wiggling uh, involved. So yeah, I'll see how that works out. And um, this is a game I haven't played for a while. It really surprised me how much I liked it. And it's Mad World, uh, a Sega title, um, created by Platinum Games, who you probably know developed Bayonetta. And what's that one I got recently? Vanquish. Vanquish has just had a sort of reboot on the PC and I bought that on Steam a little while ago and that's quite good fun. Although it feels quite dated and very Japanese, but it's, um, yeah, quite quite cool fun. And Mad World, it's, it's very cool. It's in black and white apart from the blood. And so it's like, what's that game show? Mo um, not a real game show, I'm trying to think of Running Man, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, or I guess in a way like Smash TV that was loosely inspired by that. Mad World, that's a lot of fun. You can pick that up for a pound or two these days. Well worth getting. This one I haven't played, Red Steel 2. I've played the first Red Steel, but um, yeah, that's supposed to be quite good. I wonder how these games are going to fare for someone who's got a room scale virtual reality setup because yeah five ten years ago whenever it was that game came out it might have been exciting to wave your Wiimote around and see something a sword slashing about on the screen but when you can play something like raw data or um, Sirento on the on the VR system where you're actually uh, you can see the sword in your hand and you can cut things in half and cut up robots and chop their heads off. I wonder whether I like that as much as I would have done back then. And then a couple of games that I really want to play again. Um, Big Brain Academy, that was one of the first things my friends introduced me to when they got their Wii's. And I remember with my friends who were not really gamers, they really got into competing against each other and who could get the best scores on We um, Big Brain Academy. And then this has got to be my favourite game on the Wii. Um, and I don't know if it's a very well-known game, but I absolutely love it. It's called Elides. And it's, I'm going to have to make a whole video about this because I like it so much. In fact, it might well... Well, it, when I eventually get round to doing it, it will be a gamer's living room episode. 
and I'll talk more about those in just a second. And then I picked up some original X, oh actually that's Xbox 360. Talking of games that are um, quiz shows, this one, Seen It, a movie trivia quiz. Um, I really do like that, I love movie trivia, I love quizzes, so Seen It is um, pretty cool. And then, yeah, I don't know where some of my uh, original Xbox games have gone, but I found some good ones to take back with me for when Xbox One compatibility becomes available. Um, I know this the sequel to this isn't going to be out probably for at least another year, but I wanted to play through Shenmue 2 again. And it's got a little movie disc in there that uh, shows you the story of Shenmue 1. So I want to get back into the world of Shenmue before I play uh, Shenmue 3, which I'm very excited about. Um, and I know I've got the first one for this, but I could only find the second, X-Men Legends. I really like these games, and uh, I don't have them on any systems. I'd want, but they're still going for a really high price. Uh, the oh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I've played the first one. On I had it on the Wii a while ago, and then I think I sold it. Um... But uh, yeah, X-Men Legends is a very similar sort of game. Really like, well, I say I really like, I haven't played that one. I've played the first X-Men Legends, but I don't know where it's gone. One I wanted to play for years and I still haven't played, 2000 AD's Rogue Trooper. Oh, I used to love reading those comics as a kid. Um, a very notor notorious game that... Um, I think it was either banned or some of the shops banned it when it first came out and I've never played it. Rockstar's game Manhunt. So oh, that was only 99p wherever when I got it from. It doesn't say where it came from, but yeah, been meaning to play this one for years. Still haven't played it. Ah, oh, this I really like. I really... I don't know about you guys, but I really like cell shaded art. And this was one of the first games I can remember having this art style. And I, I really liked it. And I still, I imagine I will still like this today because, because of the simple cell shading. It's the kind of thing that will still hold up. And that is 13 um, or XIII, -I -I, if you <laughs> don't know what that means. Um, yeah. I played it a bit when I had my uh, when my original Xbox was kind of a current gen console and enjoyed it. I look forward to playing that again. Uh, I got a, a game here that I'm pretty sure Mark Verheer likes, and I like it too. Outrun Two. So I haven't played this for a long time. It's not the I think there's the 2006 Coast to Coast edition, which is supposed to be really good. I don't have that, but Outrun Two. And then what is probably my favourite game on the original Xbox. Um, and it's de developed by the people who made Time Splitters. Second Sight. I'd, I don't know what it was about this game, but I really, really liked it. I wasn't expecting anything from it. And I think this itself will have to have its own video made about it at some point because I really do like that and I think I need to play through it again to remember the whole story again and then and then I'll make a video because what I'm planning to do is to take back some of my older consoles with me to the UAE and then I'm going to start making those gamers living room episodes again I mean it's only been what five years since I made the last one or the last proper one. I mean, I know I made that VR episode a, uh, a couple of months back, but yeah, the last one I made was about the PC and UFO, Enemy Unknown. And yeah, this new one, well, I'm not going to tell you what the next uh, system on my list is, but I'm going to take back probably three or four systems with me 
so I can make videos about those because they were my favorite type of video to make. They were the hardest ones to make. They took the most planning and the most preparation and the most number of retakes um, because I was a bit of a perfectionist. I actually filmed episode seven, I think it was, whatever the next one in the in the list is. I filmed it, I edited it, I deleted it, I filmed it again, I edited it, I deleted it again, and maybe third time will be a charm, but I just never got round to making it the way I really wanted it to be. So we'll see. if I, <laughs> I think this time I'm not going to be so much of a perfectionist with it, because I've gone back and watched some of them again and realised they're not very good, but... Um, they're never going to be good because I'm not good at this. I'm not good at making YouTube videos. I don't have the skills or the equipment to make it really slick, um, you know, sort of graphically. I don't have fantastic camera equipment. Um, I don't have great presenting skills. So it's only going to be average at best. So I'm, this time I'm not going to try and make something fantastic. I'm just going to try make something and get it out there. So I'm really aware that I've been talking about this for far, far, far too long. Again, I'm very sorry if you don't like these long videos. In fact, if you don't like these long videos, you're not going to be watching the end. Why am I apologising to you? Will have, you won't have even clicked on the video. So if you are here at the end, thank you very much. Those one or two of you who enjoy the longer videos, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. And please, any of these games that you've seen today, let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you have bought or what you think is worth buying in the Steam sale. Maybe there's something that I'm completely unaware of and it needs to be in my Steam library. So please let me know. So thank you very much for watching from my parents' spare room to wherever you are. This is Simon signing off. Bye-bye.